Hi, everybody. Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Today's topic, what's new with Beam Data Platform? Integrating additional functionalities while bolstering security and resiliency. Now, before we get to that topic, how about we give our guests a chance to introduce themselves? Hi, my name is Roy Adele, and I'm a cloud solution architect working for Veeam in the cloud alliances. Roy, talk to me about what Veeam is. So Veeam is a company to protect your data with backup and replication and resiliency of your entire data set. So it means that throughout the life cycle of your data from production to backup and archive and deep archive for different reasons, uh, Veeam helps you to achieve uh, your resiliency with your data. Roy, recently Veeam had a number of updates. Can you talk to me about them? Yes, for sure. So um, in addition to the ability to back up EC2 instances with uh, directly to S3, we've recently added the ability to add RDS backup, so Postgres backup to S3. And why does it matter, right? Traditionally, you could have backed it up to snapshots. Now, with the ability to backup to S3, not only that you can create tiers, so um, cascade that data and put it in archive tier for long-term storage for compliance reasons or for any reason that you need to store the data longer, but also we're talking about a significant cost reduction with um, backing up to S3 comparing to backing up to snapshots. As customers know, snapshots are a little bit more expensive and they don't give the ability to do that uh, cascading tiering. So that's one thing that we've improved. Roy, talk to me about the addition of the DynamoDB backups. Yeah, so we've added the ability to backup DynamoDB. Um, we're using the, the native tools of AWS to use that, but the, the additional capability that we're bringing is that you have a one-stop shop to backup everything, and you have a single pane of glass. So if you're connecting Veeam Backup for AWS with Veeam Backup and Replication, you have this point where you can see your entire backup infrastructure, manage it, control it, see what's going on with it, get alerting and monitoring around it, and uh, be able just to control your environment and predict on what you're doing with your backups and how do you restore them, where do you restore them, where do you keep them, and how much does all of this cost you? Talking about where you actually back them up or store them, what additional capabilities did you put in place for on-prem objects? So that's a thank you for that. That's actually a, a great additional uh, addition that we brought. Where now we have the ability to back up an uh, object wherever you want it to be backed up. So you take the object that sits on prem or on any cloud, any S3 compatible storage, um, in fact, and then you have the ability to go directly to your choice of cloud backup. And again, that capability enhanced with the um, benefit of using tiering and cascading. And uh, our customers can see somewhat more than 70% uh, price reduction comparing to what it'll do in their traditional on-prem or if they need to, you know, they run out of storage in their on-prem environment. They don't want to reinvest in a refresh in their on-prem and they still need to store that data. If you're talking about financial institutions that need to store that object, if you're talking about um, medical facilities, right? So all those X-ray images that are massive and they keep growing, those are objects that now can go into a cloud-based backup and stored for in a lower tier that is very cheap relative to on-prem or to standard S3 storage. And then you can keep it for that amount of years that you need to keep it for. Veeam natively backs up EC2 instances, uh, EBS, uh, EFS, uh, VPCs. You have a number of file, you have the file level restore, the snapshot restore. Now we're talking about the additional capabilities of backing up on-prem objects to S3, DynamoDB, Am I still getting all the features that Beam provides natively for EC2, EFS, and VPC with these new capabilities? Yes, um, all those capabilities that were there uh, are still there in enhancement. Uh, and what we can do today in addition is when customers want to deploy, let's say enterprise customers, they're really concerned about the security and how do they implement, how do they restrict the environments when they're deploying. So this is another feature that we've, or set of features that we've actually enabled where you can have more automated, but still private deployment. So uh, you won't go into the public S3 endpoints, for example, but you have a complete set of um, end um, deployment or private end deployment from your on-prem through you know, a, a VPN or a direct connect or wherever you choose to 
to connect to your cloud environment. And then even in the cloud environment, when you're doing those native backups there for your EC2 instances and so on, you'll go through uh, the private endpoints rather than going into the internet. So you increase the security. Wait, wait a second, Roy. Talk to me more about the security aspect of it, because if you went through the public endpoints, here's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm very concerned as a customer, my data is going over the internet, not through a VPN, not through any type of a security thing. But it seems that Beam has thought of the security aspect of going from on-prem into the cloud. Yes, and that's why we're enabling, uh, we're enabling the using of KMS keys. We're enabling the use of private connections into the data center, into the cloud data center or remote data center natively from VBR. And there we can actually um, protect the data and make sure that wherever it comes from point A to point B, it's secure and resilient. And all of that is actually coming to, um, you're surely familiar with our 32110 rule, right? Wait a second, wait a second. Roy, so I'm familiar with the 32110 rule. How about you explain to the audience what it is? Sure, so 321 and the additional of 10 that Veeam added means that you wanna have at least three copies of the data. One copy is the production and two other copies in two different media types. So if we're talking about AWS in this case is that with an on-prem, you have one in on-prem and one in AWS, you're complying with that. And um, the the one will mean that you're going to have one offline copy. So offline is, is kind of tricky and interesting. If you're looking at the on-prem, maybe if you put it on tape, you're making it offline. In the cloud, what we're saying to making it offline, making it kind of disconnected from the different uh, production entities. So you put it on a different AWS account and so on. And the one and zero that Veeam added um, are talking about the one says have at least one copy offline or immutable. I would say in some cases and immutable, right? Because um, what immutability means and, and if we're adding encryption to it, when um, you want to protect yourself from cyber security activities, you know, from hackers and so on, when you're sending the data into the cloud, first you're encrypted. So then this case means that you're protecting it from data theft. If someone will exit the data and will try to steal it, and we know that it happens, right? Uh, Veeam, uh, the research Veeam said, uh, every two out of three customers said that they experienced uh, ransomware activity in the last year. So it's not when- well, It's not it, if, it, it's, it, it's, when, it's when, gonna, when it's gonna happen. Correct, so, um, so that's one thing, right? So if they'll steal the data, it's encrypted and protected, so that's one thing. And if it's immutable, the other thing is that they cannot change the data. And that's also important because we see um, that hackers are actually targeting backups because they know uh, that it it's the important place for customers to save data and then customers will restore. So where's the you know effectiveness of being a hacker, if you say? So when we're putting that data in another account, segregating it, making sure that only what or who needs to access that data can access it, but also making it immutable, the data is safe from being altered, the data is safe from being read and stolen, and that kind of increased the entire um, security set of making sure that your data is resilient. Now, let's talk about the last zero, right? So that's also important, and sometimes it's, I, I think it's an area that um, customers might kind of slide or miss. Uh, we're talking about have no errors when you're testing the backups. Um, testing the backups on some cadence making sure, for example, CRC errors, or if you're reading the data to an isolated environment, to see that when you're restoring, you actually can restore. So practice that. So that the last zero is talking about, let's make sure that everything that we back up, all that backup strategy is actually I think actually that's usable. the last thing that people try to do or test out to do is their backups, that it's able to restore, right? Yes. It takes time, it takes processes. It takes the availability to actually do that. And you just hope one day you're never going to need it like insurance. And if it's there, it works, right? Exactly. And what we said, the additional ability to back up RDS Postgres or the additional capabilities of, or the capabilities that we already have, right? To back up EC2 into S3, that makes that data also portable. So if you're, um, let's say if you're hacked and you don't have access to your backup server, you don't have access to your AWS regular production account. You can still take that data that is completely portable, deploy Veeam Backup for AWS or and or Veeam Backup and Replication anywhere you want. And when you get access to that data, um, the data set knows what it is and you can restore it anywhere. 
So also not just restore to AWS, right? If you have an EC2, a cloud native EC2 backup, you can restore it on-prem. You can restore it to another cloud. You have multiple capabilities of making sure that, um, you know, you'll have, be able to recover as fast as you can. Roy, talk to me about the future of Veeam. What's the direction you're going into? So we're doubling and tripling down on security and resiliency, right? That's uh, a lot of the things that you're doing from making sure that uh, our customers will be safe when um, something like um, a ransomware activity, hackers, you know, penetration of that sort will happen. They'll be able to restore and recover quickly because we know that sometimes, you know, data is the most important asset of the customer. And if they don't have access to their data, can't, you know, they can't perform. And, and we've seen multiple cases, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a financial institution that can't, you know, transact or it's a, if it's a hospital that can't accept patients. So we're talking about uh, a lot of very, very important matters to that. From uh, a technical perspective and our, our roadmap, what we're planning is we're listening to the customers. So we're looking for, uh, we're exploring additional capabilities to back up um, native cloud or native specific AWS features to add to our uh, portfolio of products or services that you can back up. And we're actually listening to the customers. So um, customers that um, need additional capabilities reach out to us. We are listening and we're trying to add that to the roadmap where applicable because, uh, again, we know that it's important to the customers and they want their data safe and secure. Roy, before I wrap things up, my last question for you is, what advice would you give to customers out there looking to not only secure and back up their environment, but efficiently and cost-effectively? I would say, you know what? <laughs> I know I work for Veeam, but I would say, Start. Yeah. Start. Check. Look. I was waiting for you to go Veeam. I mean. <laughs> of course. Of course, Veeam. But um, what I would say is you can start for free today and test it. If you go to the AWS marketplace to deploy Veeam backup for AWS, you have the ability to, de to deploy and backup up to 10 instances for free, completely free. So go give it a try. See how easy it to deploy with 15 minutes. You can start deploying your uh, and backing up your EC2 instances. Uh, it's not a marketing item. It's actually that's how long it takes to kind of deploy, maybe 30 minutes. And uh, also with your on-prem and hybrid, you have the ability to either deploy Veeam backup replication from the marketplace easily or deploy it in your on-prem for free and back up those um, up to 10 on-prem instances as well, right? So up to 10 appliances for free. And uh, sorry, maybe not appliances, but uh, again, instances. And you'll be able to see kind of the overall picture when you connect Veeam backup and replication with Veeam Backup for AWS. And you'll benefit both of them and get that kind of single pane of glass of how your backup strategy look like. Roy, I've used Veeam, I've installed Veeam, I tested it out. I wanna know what I'm playing with and you know how the availability of this. The free trial is actually really great. It provides a, a lot of power at your fingertips. Uh, I really enjoyed the VPC data backup feature. I don't think anybody's ever thought of that and how critical it is. I walked through the restore process I tested out a production thing and I removed a route just to see if I would break some things and how quickly. And it's just like that for the restore. The functionality is awesome and easy to use. And you have the, the console is very simple. I mean, it's not over like it's not even complicated at all. It's it walks you through the steps like getting started. I absolutely like how I can back up my personal environment using their free stuff and get a, a feel for it before I can talk more about it. Yeah, um, it is. And, uh, you know, with all that, when you said you had to try it, right, the, the ability to have a restore for the VPC, just like you said, but restore a specific item from that VPC from a specific point in time, this is actually very useful when you have a large environment and someone changed something, you know, not necessarily by malicious activity, but just regular operation. It's bound to happen. Yeah, in a huge environment, you just, oh, I, I did one, two, three, and... Maybe it's wrong. I want to go back to two. Yep. And you can do that in a, in a matter of seconds. And also if you're restoring, you know, RDS or if you're restoring EC2, the granularity of being able to decide, hey, I want to restore this entire EC2 instance to wherever or just a file from it is it's very helpful for customers to be able to just, you know, get back to speed whenever they need it. Be. Thank you, Roy, for joining me. Yeah, thanks. It was a pleasure. All right, everybody. This has been another awesome episode for the John Meyer Podcast. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? We're out of here.